Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. Let's see these questions about practicing. Great idea. Could you do a video on the advantages of short frequent practice versus less frequent longer practice? The take home message that I'm giving you immediately is short frequent practices are much better than long practices. The why? It takes a little bit more time to explain, but it's interesting and you want to hear it, okay? Because intuitively speaking, if you were asking this to me like a few years ago, I would have told you, no, get a big chunk of time in your day, get an hour where nobody is disturbing you and just practice for an hour. That's what I would have told you. It feels intuitively right. Now, but, but then I tried, I, I read a lot, a lot of studies. I mean, after all, it's my job to know how people learn. So I read a lot of studies on, on how this was working and I found out that if you keep practicing for a long time, after a while, your attention goes down. The problem is that it goes down much sooner than you think, okay? So, it's much better to either have a lot of short practices, and with short I mean five to ten minutes, okay? Uh, scattered throughout the day, if it works for you, or maybe you have one long practice if it works for you, but then you have to break it up internally in a lot of short five to maximum ten minutes practices where you change what you're doing all the time. Okay? So you should never grab a scale and then play this for one hour. I mean, I know it's obvious, but I know some people who do that because they're like, no, I want to get fast on this case. I'm going to push and push. Even if you're pushing for speed, after a few minutes, you push as far as you can, <laughs> okay? There is no more improvement to be had. There is no, in, in that moment, you cannot get any more result that you could not get in the first few minutes. So. The best thing is to just change what you're doing. And the idea is to change as much as you can. I got questions that ask me, what if I change the tempo? And I'm like, okay, that's a profound misunderstanding, which I'm happy to correct. You should change tempo all the time. You should play your scale, for instance, let's say you're practicing a scale, you should play your scale slow, okay, once. And then the next time you should change speed, and then you should go slow again. Point is, you don't want to stay on the same tempo for more than 20, 30 seconds, okay? It's, you, so the tempo is something that you want to change all the time. Try to play faster, try to play slower, try to play faster again. And there are various strategies about that, and we can go about all them. But if you want to know more about those strategies, I would recommend you guys check out my friend Mike Filipov at uh, practiceguitarnow.com because he has the best routines on this. It's like magic what he can do about a specific thing. And, and, and you will notice in those routines that you're not staying still for a long time. You're not doing the same thing for a long time. You change, change, change. But when we talk about changing stuff every five or ten, ten minutes, and just say five minutes because ten minutes are already too long, when we talk about this, we're talking about changing completely what you're doing. So, for instance, in five minutes you practice your scale. It could be that you're playing the scale up and down, or you're playing a sequence on the scale, or you're improvising on the scale. The next five minutes you should work, for instance, on your rhythm playing, and maybe... Okay, play and play, work with a metronome and get a rhythmic and, and get it down. The next five minutes you may work on your theory. The next five minutes you can work on finding your chords on the fretboard. The next five minutes something different, okay? Sometimes some exercise may require more time. If you are finding all the positions of the chords on the fretboard, they may require more. But after 10 minutes of finding chords on the fretboard, let's be honest, guys, you're tired, <laughs> okay? I'm tired. It's you cannot go on with the same level of efficiency and um, and verve, okay, and and energy as you will go on for the first few minutes, okay? It, it, it's just too long. Now you can come and tell me, but Tommaso, I have an hour a day to practice, and so those are twelve periods of five minutes. But I don't have twelve things to practice. That's okay. Let's say you have three things to practice. In the first five minutes, you do the first. In the second five minutes, you do the second. In the third five minutes, you do the third, and then you start the cycle again. 
The important point is that if you have three things to practice, you don't do a block of 20 minutes of the first thing, a block of 20 minutes of the second, and a block of 20 minutes of the next. Given the choice, let's say you have one hour and you have three items. Techniques on scale, are pages, and um, um, hitting chord notes when you improvise, okay? Most people will just do this, like 20 minutes on item 1, 20 minutes on item 2, 20 minutes on item 3, and call it a day. Instead, what you should do is you split this hour in five minutes intervals, I mean, let, let's pretend those are all the same, okay? And then you do item one, then two, then three, then one, then two, then three, then one, then two, then three, then one, then two, then three. If you do this, you're gonna notice two things. The first thing you're gonna notice is that this doesn't feel as good as the other one. The 20 minute feels good because you can sit down, take your time, it's relaxing, okay? That should actually ring some alarm bell. You're trying to push yourself, okay? You're trying to, to go beyond what you can do. If it's relaxing, it could not be the right thing. But the 20 minutes feel better, and that's why most people do it. This five minute thingy feels rushed. You, you put on a, 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 a timer, an interval timer, and then it rings every five minutes, and every time it rings, you change. It feels rushed after the, you do this, Item one for five minutes, it drinks and I'm like, but I just started. I didn't learn anything. Don't worry, I know how you feel. This is one of those cases where your feelings are tricking you. Just go ahead, <clears throat> just go on item number two and an item number three, and it feels kinda rushed for the whole hour. But what you do is that if you do this for a week, at the end of the week, you improved much more than if you were doing blocks of 20 minutes. It, it still doesn't feel like it works. It still feels like there's something wrong. It still feels like it's not the right way to practice, but when you measure yourself and for instance, how much speed you gained or how much better you can hit chord notes or all those things, there is no comparison. Breaking things down in chunks of five minutes works way, way, way better, much faster, better, you have a faster improvement, you have a higher retention of what you learn, it's crazy, it just doesn't feel good, <laughs> okay? So, it's up to you if you want to optimize for maximum improvement, do this, or for ease of practice, do the other things, but then don't, don't expect to go to learn the things very fast, okay? Now, if you don't have an hour, or if you have an hour but scatter around the day, the same thing applies. Let's say you have uh, 50 minutes in the morning, then you have maybe those 20 minutes um, uh, just after lunch, and then you have maybe the, the remaining 25 minutes after dinner. Do exactly the same. In the 50 minutes in the morning, you do one, two, and three. In the 20 minutes in the afternoon, you do one, two, three, and one again, because you have other, other five minutes. And in the remaining 25 minutes, you do two, three, one, two, three again, okay? No problem. These could be, those, those could even be 12 separate five minutes practices that you can do throughout the day. At this point, it depends on you. It depends on what you do for a living, what your typical day is like, if you have time to do all this kind of thing. I know of students of mine who brought the guitar with them in the office. Okay, and whenever they don't have a client, they put in five minutes of practice and they become good very fast. I used to have a student that was a, a crane operator, and if you do a, if you're a crane operator, you spend uh, like two or three hours waiting for the people on the ground to set all these things, and then you have 15 minutes of very intensive work, and then you have to wait at two hours for things to happen on the ground. And so he was the, and so he asked me, "Could I bring a guitar up there?" Well, it doesn't depend on me. Ask your <laughs> ask your boss. If the boss says yes, though, do it. And he couldn't fit a full guitar in the cabin on the on 50 meters in the air in the crane, so he bought a traveler guitar, the smaller ones, and then he had all those two hours to practice, and then he, he did this thing of changing things really often, 
and you become very good very fast. So the point is, depending on the job you're doing, depending on what your schedule looks like, this could be one single chunk, could be many different chunks, okay? I actually prefer to have different chunks because I'm fresher. I practice with more energy if it's different, shorter chunks, okay? So, but definitely don't stay on the same thing for more than five minutes. Change radica radically what you do. Switch your mental gears as often as you can. Five minutes seems to be a good interval. Now, if you want things you can practice in five minutes, I have plenty. One thing I would recommend everybody to get is to learn the notes on your fretboard. That's something you should practice five minutes and then let it go for the day, okay? Just five minutes a day, because it works better this way. Your brain has more time to think about this. And I have a free ebook that explains exactly what to do to learn all the notes on your fretboard so that you can recall them instantly, okay? Like learning them and memorizing them permanently without any pain. Check the link on the top right, you can get that, it's free, no string attached, get it, practice it, enjoy it, it's gonna make your playing much better. So here's how you practice and the benefit of short practices, and this is Tommaso Zilli of MusicForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!